He is also the author of the upcoming book, The Whole Story, Adventures in Love, Life, and Capitalism. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. John Mackey. Thank you. Now, John, we're having this discussion today because you and I are both of the belief that uh, the ultimate path to freedom, or certainly one of the biggest ones, is in our own health and wellness, and that, that certainly reflects in what you've done in your life. I, I'm curious, uh, to start off, would you say that there was an exact moment when you realized just how important uh, health and wellness was to you, or was it kind of a gradual evolution over time? Or I think, I think it's been a gradual evolution over time. I, I realized I played um, sports in high school. I played, I played basketball in high school. and So I, I've always known for a long time that being fit was important, that if I was fit, I felt good, right? But I kind of had my food awakening when I was, how old was I, 22, 22, I moved, I moved into this vegetarian co-op. I was a student at the University of Texas. Moved into this vegetarian co-op, housing co-op, and uh, I wasn't a vegetarian at that time. I just honestly thought I'd meet some really cool people in a vegetarian co-op, and I did, including my girlfriend that co-founded Whole Foods with me. But it was there in that influence where I learned how to cook, I learned, I learned how to eat healthily. I began to study it, and I, I got on fire because it never had occurred to me until then that, wow, kind of like exercise, what you ate. I had thought eating was like, like being an automobile. You go into the gas station to get some fuel because, you know, where bodies are machines and you just need fuel, you need enough calories to get going. It never occurred to me that there were, like, you could actually feel better, have more vitality, have more energy, have a healthier immune system, live longer. That was all like complete revelation to me at age 22. And that, that's when it began. But then, so in a lot of ways, the rest of my life has been devoted to you know, continuous evolution, to, to be healthier, more vital, to, to live long, long and prosper, to quote Mr. Spock. It's interesting how it intuitively makes sense that the food we eat is not just a collection of calories, it's the actual thing that we're eating and therefore whatever is in it is going into our body and affects us both in positive and, and potentially negative ways. But, you know, so many people don't realize that. Now, when you were, you know, uh, getting into the, to the idea of creating whole foods, what was it that we, you know, this is a big conference about, among many other things, free market capitalism, uh, obviously something that you believe very strongly in as well. What was lacking in the market there that you saw needed to be addressed with Whole Foods? Yeah, I'd, <laughs> that's the way you'd think if you went to business school and got an MBA. But when you're a 22-year-old college dropout with 120 hours of electives and study philosophy, religion, and world literature, you're not thinking about market opportunities. Um, <coughs> we just thought it'd be, Renee and I thought it'd be super cool to open up our own store. I was working, I became the food buyer for the co-op and I was reading books and um, I went to work for a small natural food store called The Good Food, Good Food Company. And I th thought, you know, I could do this. This is, this is within my realm of competence. I'm able to do this. And uh, I came home, back to the co-op one day and I said, Renee, what do you think if you and I open up our own store? And she said, oh, Mac -o man. That'd be super cool. Let's do that. She was a hippie, and, and so was I. So, so we did. So that's what we did. And uh, yeah, so we didn't see a market opportunity. We just saw an adventure. This could be fun. And it was fun. Although we did manage to lose half our money in the first year. And the, but uh, that's, you'll have to read my upcoming memoir, which tells the whole story of the 44 years of Whole Foods from scratch to, I guess when I retired a year and a half ago, we were 22 billion in sales, 540 stores, and employed 105,000 people. So, as they say, we came a long way, baby. But um, we were just trying to sell healthy food. People ask me what the purpose of Whole Foods was when we started out. Really, it was to sell healthy food, sell healthy, natural, and organic food to people and earn a living and have fun. And that was our higher purpose. And frankly, all three of those things, I don't know if they're all still there, but they were there when I left. Uh, so Amazon owns it now. So it, it, it's, when I was having a fight towards the end it, with uh, their, 
I was arguing with the guy. I was trying to get people to come back to the offices, and they didn't want, they didn't, they weren't ready to bring back from COVID lockdowns. And I said, this is ter this is destroying our culture, Dave. Because I mean, everybody's working doing work at our stores, and why should our, why should our corporate people have, you know, why they only go back to work too? And he said, well, we're not ready to do that in Amazon. And I said, yeah, well. I can't speak for Amazon, but it's wrecking Whole Foods' culture. We need to bring people back. And he said, Mackie, if you didn't want to give up control of Whole Foods, you shouldn't have sold it to us. They're not coming back. So that was kind of when I realized, man, eh, time for me to go. But anyway, my own health, and Spike is right, that um, how many people here are under 30? Yeah, this is a really tough sell <laughs> because when you're under 30, you actually feel like you're sort of indestructible and immortal, and uh, uh, mm, you'll you'll discover it differently as you age. But um, there's just been a continued ongoing awakening for me, and so like the new business I started when I, after I left Whole Foods is called Love Life, and it's going to be a chain of one stop wellness and medical centers that I hope was going to transform the world uh, and certainly disrupt medical care. Because when do people go see a doctor? When they're sick. When they're sick. Yeah. But imagine a different relationship where now with the technologies that we have, the type of assessments we can do, the wearables we can do like Apple Watch and Aura Rings, we can, we can see where people, we can establish baseline of health for people. And then with a good doctor, and a good wellness coach and good instructions, we can optimize ourselves at higher levels. That's possible today for the first time in a scientific way. It's not been possible in the past. So my vision is that 20 years from now, the doctor's job is to keep you from ever needing to go see a doctor because you don't get sick. You stay at a really high level of, a, of a, your immune, immune system is very strong. And I really do think it's our genetic potential to live to be, to live to be 100 in pretty good health. Here's a quick trivia question. What percentage of Americans make it to the, uh, what per, one out of how many make it to 100? Got to answer quickly because nobody wants to Google it. Uh, yes? Two out of 100. Two out of 100. I, I would guess one out of like 100,000 or something like that. You're too low and you're way too high. Okay. It's about, it's about, it's changing, but it's about one out of four to 5,000. So, the odds do not favor it, but I still think it's our genetic potential to do that. Yeah, I, uh, I can actually serve as a, a personal testimony to both the failures or shortcomings of the current healthcare system and also the, uh, the uh, uh, fallacy that a lot of you are experiencing right now, especially a lot of those who raise their hand because you're children, frankly. Um, the whole... Oh, no, you're not children. Yeah, yeah. I am... The, the, the fallacy of this doesn't apply to me. I'm very young and I'm healthy and I'm going to not think about the fact that that will end soon. Um, I was you relatively recently in the last 20 years. Uh, I did not take my health seriously. I was... I reached a point where I was over 100 pounds. Uh, every... Uh, every uh, over 200 pounds? Or? Or, uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> I was... Yes. I was, I was 100 pounds over, uh, over 100 pounds overweight. Okay. I left out the overweight part. Thank you for catching it. I was over 100 pounds. Uh, yeah, I was over 100 pounds overweight. Uh, you know, doctors are telling me, you know, you're starting to get, you know, you're in your 30s. You know, this is something you should take seriously. And I, and I never did and never would have until one day I woke up and the right side of my body was going numb shortly after we found out that I had MS. And that forced me to look at my health and what I was eating and what I was not doing, which was exercising and, and wellness and so forth. And in retrospect, that diagnosis of MS, that having to deal with MS is the second greatest blessing in my life. The first greatest blessing, of course, is when that young lady over there said yes when I asked her to marry me. Thank you so much. Round of applause to her for saying yes, by the way. <laughs> um, but it was uh, the, the arguably second greatest thing to ever happen to me because uh, the reason that I'm healthy now is because I had to take it seriously. I was going to a hospital, every, I was being hospitalized just about every other month and I was declining quickly. And then when I started taking this seriously, the weight came off, I'm now under 100 pounds overweight. Um, and I'm also 
My MS has been in remission for close to eight years now. I, I'm a testament to what happens when you take your health seriously. And I will say, and I, I would like to get your thoughts on this as well, John. Um, how free can you be if you don't have your health and your wellness in order, your mental and physical health? How free are you truly? Well, what happens when you don't have it? For example, my wife now has long COVID. She, she is vaccine injured, actually, from the first booster shot. Wow. And it's been 22 months. And uh, she, she's like an old iPhone battery that, needs, that only holds a charge for a couple hours. Mm. And so she has to constantly be recharging it up. And um, so she's lost that health. And, uh, you know, we think we can get it back. But um, kind of she's doing everything right from a lifestyle standpoint. So we, we hope it's just going to take time. But I'm living that every day with her now as I'm taking care of her. And so w she's not free any longer. She can't really go out and socialize because it exhausts her. She can't really do too much exercise. That exhausts her. Um, and she's got brain fog. She just can't concentrate for very long. So this is a real reminder to me that if you lose your health, you lose your freedom. You just can't, you just are, um, you sort of become trapped. Your world shrinks. When you have your vitality and health, uh, you have the world open to you to explore, to learn, to grow. Uh, to do amazing, interesting, interesting things to do. And if you lose that, then you spend the rest of your life trying to regain it. Yeah, it is. We talk at these conferences, and understandably so, we talk a lot about freedom from a standpoint of our natural rights or our legal freedoms and things like that. But the reality is, if you're not okay physically and or mentally, uh, which frankly, those things are very synergistic, but if, if you're not okay um, in terms of your health and well-being, you have a very severe restriction on your true freedom, your, your true uh, uh, quality of life and so forth. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit more about love life. So you started this relative... Well, let's talk about some of the things people can do to be healthier. Sure, and absolutely. Let's talk about love life. Okay, okay. What are some of... If, if someone came to you and said, John, I am looking to just generally get healthier, what would you say are the top few things you would say right off the bat? Well, if, you don't, if you're not vaccine injured from long COVID... This is what I'd tell you. <laughs> um, yeah, I think first it starts with, I think it starts with diet. It's very difficult to talk about diet today. It's, it's like talking about religion or politics. People get v very angry about diet. If you might have experienced this, I don't know. But you know how it is, you, you're talking about politics and people start ghosting you or they, they cancel you and, and uh, they're, you're no longer their friend just because you have different political views. Or... You have different religious beliefs, you know, or you don't have any religious beliefs at all and people are mad at you. So I have found diets now falling into the, it's now the big three, talk about food. So people get really passionate about it. But, you know, Michael Pollan, um, I think kind of got it right, very simply. He said, it's really pretty simple. First, eat real food. And that means don't eat junk processed foods, which is what most people are addicted to. We are frankly addicted to things that have a lot of calories in them because that's how we evolved, calorie scarcity. So we like fat, we like sugar, we like white flour, we like salt, we like oil, we like things, butter, ice cream. These things that have a lot of calories, taste really good, and they're highly addicting. So most people are hooked on junk food and they grow up with it and uh, it's very difficult for them to change because they don't recognize they're, they're actually, frankly, addicted. You don't know until you try to quit something if you're addicted to it. So food means eat real food, which means actually fruits and... Oh, then he said, uh, mostly plants. So full disclosure, I have been an ethical vegan for 20 years, but I don't think you need to be a vegan to be super healthy, but I do think you have to eat lots of fruits and vegetables, whole grains, beans, nuts, seeds. And if you eat some animal foods too, that are actually real animal foods and not just hyper-processed animal foods, <laughs> that you're probably on the basis of having a really healthy diet that'll, that'll keep you healthy and strengthen your immune system. And then after diet, exercise. I mean, uh, fitness is a really good thing. It gives you more energy, and so that's partly sort of aerobic training and, and uh, weight training or strength training. And um, I'm a great believer in yoga and Pilates. I really do think those are helping keep me young by keeping flexibility, resilience, and balance. Um, sleep. I mean, I gave up alcohol now two years ago because of my Apple Watch. 
because I was monitoring my sleep with it, and any time I had even one beer or one glass of wine, my deep sleep would go to zero. No deep sleep, none. My pulse rate would go up eight to 10 points while my body's trying to detoxify it. And then my overall sleep would drop about an hour to two hours. And it's like, so it's, now it's the decision. It's like, do I want to sleep well tonight or do I want to have, a, do I want to have something to drink? And for now over two years, the answer has always been the same. I want to sleep good. So sleep is really important. It really strengthens the immune system. Um, and stress. I don't know how you guys manage stress, but I can tell you meditation. There, we all need ways to manage stress. Going for walks in nature, being able to meditate, do some types of relaxation. Because stress is cumulative. It wears us down. It wrecks our health. Um, and if we can't, you really have to have solutions for your stress. Um, finally, um, oh, two things. And then your mental attitude is very important. For, for, for really health, there are certain attitudes that we have in life. Because um, first, I'd say gratitude. You know what? If you're not grateful, you're not happy. And if you are grateful, you're happy. Gratefulness and happiness kind of go together. Otherwise, we contract down into feeling sorry for ourselves and focusing on our problems. We get stuck in our ego. Gratitude is expansive. So I always practice gratitude every day. It makes your world big again. And um, not being a victim in life. Most libertarians are not. But um, you're responsible for your life. Take responsibility for it. Stop blaming other people. Stop blaming your parents. Stop blaming your friends, the girlfriend that broke up with you, blah, 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 blah. Nobody wants to hear your sad story. Instead, go from there and optimize your life. Those mental attitudes will help you be more vital. It strengthens the immune system. And the final thing is, as I told the alcohol story, the toxins you put in your body do matter and they do accumulate. So you know what the toxins are. Uh, nicotine, alcohol, Mm, if you're doing too much pot, it's another toxin. Certainly the harder drugs are toxins as well. So, um, yeah, keep yourself, keep your body pure and healthy and vital and strong. You're young, you can get away with it for a while. But, um, you know, I'll tell you one other story, then I'll let this one go. At Whole Foods, we had a, we had a philosophical split because the company was partly driven by this desire, what I call the people that were oriented towards health. I was in that category. But I had another group of people that were, their orientation was what we call foodies. They really wanted the good life, the fine wines, the, you know, the Michelin star meals, and this, the finest food in the world. And without naming any names, that strategy now that they've gotten into their 60s and 70s has not been good. Uh, one had a heart attack, another one had a stroke and lost much of his mobility. A third had a lung transplant. Um, and the people that stayed and sort of lived for eating healthily, they're, they're all doing good in their, in their 70s now. So the lifestyle choices you make, they have major consequences down the road. So just, you should just be aware of that. End of soapbox and uh, your turn. Yeah, I, I'm actually going to jump on that soapbox real quick, especially about how it affects you longer term, the choices you're making now. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, the... Uh, one of the, the, the diet that I do is based on uh, research that was done by a doctor named Dr. Swank, uh, Roy Swank, who did research on people with MS using his diet versus people with MS who didn't. He started this in the 1950s. Some of the people that did his diet are still alive now. They have MS. They've had it since the 40s, back when MS was essentially a long death sentence, and they're still alive now, well into their 90s and even hundreds. That is a testament to what changing your lifestyle can do even now or in your earlier years can do longer term. Now, now we're both off the soapbox. Let's talk a little more about love life. What is your vision for that versus what the common experience is for healthcare for people now? Well, um, A, you can check out Love Life because we have a website. We're in business now, love.life, www.love.life. And uh, as you can see our website, we have a telehealth business. We have a coaching business for diabetes, uh, mastering diabetes for both type 1 and type 2 diabetes, gestation diabetes. diabetes. Uh, so we have a coaching program. Um, we, have a, uh, we actually have a restaurant in uh, Miami called Love Life Cafe. 
that was an acquisition. But those are small parts. The real vision is to open a chain of, of large one-stop medical wellness centers. And the first one is going to open up in LA area, in El Segundo, California. Um, not, not accidentally close to one of Whole Foods' most successful stores in Southern California is in almost next door to us. They'll be bringing customers in that will have a synergies there. So uh, we're going to have, it'll be have a healthy restaurant, mostly plant-based, but not strictly vegan. Uh, we're going to have a fitness center. We're going to be able to, uh, that's a longer story, but we're doing a very special fitness center that unlike anything most people have seen. Uh, we have a um, spa. We have a medical center. And we have three pickleball courts for recreation. So um, that's going to be the big test. If that, I always say, if this won't work in LA, it won't work. <laughs> the fact that it may work in LA doesn't mean it'll work anywhere else. But you might as well find out quickly whether you have a basis for business. So the good thing about this one is I made a lot of money at Whole Foods. And so I was able to capitalize this business very well from the beginning. As I've promised my wife, I, I, I'm willing to lose all my money up to X amount, <laughs> if necessary. And so I won't cross over that line. Um, so I'm very excited about that. And uh, yeah, you know, I really believe in that this is also important for, 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 for longevity and health. Purpose makes a huge difference in life. It's like, as long as you have a purpose, your body partly forgets to die. It's like, we can't go yet because we haven't fulfilled the purpose. So keep having a purpose because so many of my friends that who retire and they don't have anything to do except watch TV and, and I don't know what they do, they're, they're wasting away. Whereas people that have this sense of purpose are going strong. So, um, and by the way, that's not to, you guys are young. Uh, it's important that you try to find your life purpose when you're young. Most people don't ever find their life purpose because they're too damn scared. They're too scared and they play it safe. And uh, they don't do what their heart calls them to do. If you can get quiet, your heart is calling to you all the time, it's whispering to you, telling you what you need to do. Answer the call. Answer that call. Follow your heart. Do what you have the passion to do. And you will find your, your life's a grand adventure and that you're gonna have strong purpose, and you're gonna meet the most interesting people in the world, and you're gonna have a blast. So uh, that's my, always my advice to give to young people, which is don't play it safe, do what you care about, follow your heart. And that also helps lead to good health, in my opinion, too. You said so much of what I do. Who was at the Students for Liberty Leadership Conference in June of 22 here in DC? Okay, if you recall, I said a lot of these things about act of gratitude, looking for your purpose, tenaciously seek your purpose. It is a big part of what will, will give you the longevity and, the, and the, the life and the purpose that you want. So thank you for that. Um, how many minutes do we have left? And yeah, we can do some questions. We, okay, so we can take at least maybe one or two questions. If anyone wants to raise their hands, we'll take what we can. Hey. Yeah, I was just going to ask about like people that maybe try and tell you otherwise when you say like I have found a way toward health, and so they're just denying what you say maybe because like some sort of official study or something says otherwise, or some sort of mainstream consensus uh, says otherwise when it comes to health, but maybe it's not like the optimal thing to actually be like living. In. You got to follow the science. If if you go onto the social media platforms like YouTube, you you can find anything you want to find there. There's people that will tell you these stories and anecdotal stories, but what does the science say? What do the studies show? And so you guys have heard, you know, probably now you've heard of the Blue Zones because uh, Dan Buettner did his uh, Netflix study, uh, or he showed it on Netflix, and uh, Dan's a close friend of mine, one of my closest friends, and Dan said that, um, John, it took me 15 years to get my Instagram account to 125,000 people, but after the second episode broke for, um, uh, Blue Zones on Netflix, I was up over 500,000. So, so, Netflix, so the Blue Zones, the Blue Zones is a study of the longest lived people in the world. And there are six Blue Zones. And uh, they are uh, Okinawa, Japan, uh, Sardinia, Italy, Ikaria, Greece, Nicoya, Costa Rica, Singapore now, and Loma Linda, California. Highest concentration of seven-day Adventists in the world who live very healthy lifestyles. And so the Blue Zones have very common traits, which are the things that I've been talking about today. 
These are, these are proven. The longest lived people eat whole food, plant-based diets. They're not vegans, but they eat mostly plants. They eat lots of fruits and vegetables. Those are the most, those are the healthiest foods you can eat. They get daily exercise. They sleep well. They don't do a lot of toxins. They have community. They're part of a family. They, are, they belong, and they have a strong sense of purpose. These things, doesn't matter where in the world you are, the same, same things are common. If people want to tell you differently, just always ask them to show you the science. Where is the science show? What are the, what are the facts here? That's the only way you can deal with it. As I say, food is like religion. You're not going to persuade somebody that's in a religious, that's converted to something. They're not interested in facts. And I'm not going to go into any of them because I'll get somebody pissed off at me. But if you, if you go in and start, well, show me the facts, show me the evidence. You know, it's faith. You've got to believe it. It's not any different with food. People are so attached to their diets. And, you know, that's fine. You, it's your life. We're free. You can eat whatever you want to eat. I'm just sharing with what I've learned. Maybe it'll help. Maybe it doesn't help. It's up to you. Also not for nothing, a lot of times that the people that well, will say that look like the kind of person you'd never want to take advice from. They, you, they don't look like they themselves have figured out the best way to, to live their lives. But was there, I think you had a, your hand raised as well. I was going to ask about what you thought of the new, or the uprising supplement revolution that's going on, and everyone kind of searching for new supplements and things like that, and they're getting more mainstream and popular. What your opinion is on those? Uh. Americans, I can't speak for people outside of America, Americans, we like shortcuts. We actually don't want to change anything. We are good at adding new things on that don't require us to change and are easy to do. So biohacking is very, very popular now. People are looking, you know, I can do stem cell treatments, that, uh, that I, I can take a human growth hormone, uh, I, or I, I, can, I can do uh, s some type of... Um, uh, um, where you're taking NAD as a, as a in, in, in a, what do you call that when you've got a, uh, yeah, nutraceuticals, there's, people want some easy path that doesn't require change. Well, I mean, again, people are free. You can do that. I'm not going to say there's n no little things you can take that, I mean, I take, I take a few supplements because I'm vegan. I take B12 because I'm not going to get it if I don't supplement it. I take omega-3s because I'm not eating fish, so I take omega-3s. Um, and I'm male, so I take zinc. And I'll leave you to do the research for why men might want to take zinc. Um, <laughs> and uh, that's it, right? So, and um, yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I, I think that there's always going to be a market for people that want to take supplements. And if you're taking you know, 50 pills a day, you're probably not. You're not eating very well. Let me put it that way. You should get yeah. it from your food. Yeah, I actually do take a tremendous number of, nowhere near 50, but I take uh, well over 15 supplements a day. But they're called supplements, not replacements. And I think a lot of people are using them as replacements. I'm going to take this so that I don't have to do this. And that's not how you should look at it. I think it's incredible. And I, I, I think and hope that a lot of the uh, what's emerging is going to help people's lives moving forward, uh, hopefully including me because I'm taking them. Um, but you need to eat right and you need to exercise and you need to engage in. I'm so glad that you brought up the wellness stuff like uh, active gratitude and, and, and you need to have seek a purpose. I actually, if anyone wants to look for it, there's a YouTube video that I made called How I Beat MS. And uh, it talks about uh, just about everything we talked about here specific to what I choose to do. Um, but the point of all that is if I was just doing the supplements part of that, if that of that that video that that I did, uh, I would still be going to the hospital probably every other week, and I probably wouldn't be able to walk anymore. And who knows what else I would have lost in that time. You you have to do the whole thing. Whether you're choosing to also add supplements to supplement that, that's fine. Um, but yeah, it's it is not a replacement for living healthfully, physically and mentally. I think we're wrapping up here. I'll leave you with the final word. So the name of my new company is Love Life. And actually, I think that's actually the key. Love life. Love your life. Life's a gift. It's amazing. We are alive. Oh my God, that's incredible. And we're only alive for not that long. So love it. And love, and love everyone around you. And go and, and have this great adventure of your life. And if you just follow good, sensible habits that, that aren't that difficult to implement, You'll be healthier, you'll have more vitality, and you'll have a lot more fun. 
So I wish all the young people here, by the way, I'm on the board of Students for Liberty, and we were just going over like why I'm on the board, is because young people always inspire me. They don't, you don't yet know what you can't do. And I hope you never figure it out. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you all so much for being a part of this. Thank you, John.